AM1 is a fully analog mixing console designed by Michael Zell in Germany. Zell caught my attention since lots of my idols use Michael desks nowadays. People like the Chemical Brothers or Aphex Twin. And also Mark Anastos helped designing it and incorporated his ideas. They offer stereo and mono channels and their CV channel which I reviewed in a previous video. There is no VCA inside the signal path except the CV channel. So the desk offers a very transparent and clean sound. It's a modern design intended to be used within a DAW based environment. It doesn't try to be vintage or emulate vintage sound, um, which many other desks do, and I quite like that. This desk is like a blank page to start working from, and it's laid out very intuitively. And actually it's compact enough that I could imagine using this in a live situation. Even though you could order a large scale frame with up to 40 channels in it. Well, there are some operational as well as functional features that set the AM1 apart from other desks. For example, you get a dry wet control on the inserts for every channel, which provides you with parallel processing on each channel as a standard. And further, you have a MS matrix on each channel as well for sophisticated um, stereo processing. And you have a stereo width control on each channel as well. But let me show you some of the features uh, on the desk. So I have a simple, um, this is just a drum loop. And I will just EQ it a little bit to taste. Let's push the bass a little bit. We need to find the right frequency. Yeah, I think this is where the resonance, resonant frequency sits. A bit less. Yeah. Add a little bit of air. With the cue? Without? So what I've done on the insert, I have a compressor which is compressing very drastically. Let me show you that. This is the, the wet compressor signal and it, it's very smashing badly. Since the insert gives me the opportunity to um, add parallel compression, um, I can just mix the signal with the dry signal. This is like 50-50. Let's turn off the compressor to see the effect. Maybe it's still a little bit too much. Without compression. With compression. Let me bypass both EQ and compressor to see, to show you the signal, uh, what it sounded before. So this is the signal without compression and EQing. Now I'll switch them both in at the same time. We can even try to open up the stereo with a little bit. This is mono now because um, I engaged the stereo bass and the, the knob is set to mono. So this would boost stereo. And if I exceed that stereo point, the, the signal becomes even wider, but the bass stays intact. You hear the difference? Let me switch it off. This is the natural signal without any stereo processing. 
and I'll switch it back in. All right. Uh, I have a Sinti here. So this is just a dry synth loop. Let's add a little bit of delay and reverb, which is on auxiliary send one. You can see the auxiliary um, signal here. This is the return channel, which again has a little EQ inside, which I love because you can actually EQ the, the effect signal. I want to remove the, the, the low frequency content of that delay. And maybe I'll boost uh, the highs a little bit. you can use the, the, the low cut it's very musical you can kind of like do a DJ high pass filtering let me show you Another feature I really like is um, the fact that Michael put in a zero crossing detection, which means if I disengage the channel or engage it, it will not click. Because on, on, on most desks you will hear like you engage the baseline or the kick and it's like <laughs> and the AM1 that's not the case. So whenever I engage or disengage the channel, it will not click at, at no time. So yeah, there's a little circuit inside the, the channel which will detect the, if the signal goes through zero and wait until that particular point to, to engage the channel, which I, I love for jamming, it's brilliant. show you the the dry drum loop again sounds very weak and not really cutting through the mix but with the EQ engaged and uh, parallel compression really gets thick and, and fat Every time I talk to Michael, it becomes obvious that it's very important for him to not compromise on anything. For example, did he use potentiometers with a second or third taper, which will, if set to zero, not only be set to zero, but actually be switched out of the circuit. Or the zero crossing thing I explained. It's all those little details that accumulate to something quite extraordinary in terms of mixing and being creative. And it's remarkable to have a mastering EQ on each channel because I feel like it's kind of the final frontier as far as DSP processing not quite catching up with the analog domain, especially if you're using EQs in a creative way and just not for equalization. 
if you do large booths and cuts, I find plugins still to sound a little bit wooly or not as, not as precise as analog EQs. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. You know, in electroacoustic music, um, the mixing and writing process often becomes one. And the AM1 supports that approach to music better than anything else I've tried.